Hello, friends. Chris Gordon here with another exciting episode of uh, Unsung Heroes. And today, uh, I'm very excited to welcome a very good friend of mine from Chicago area, right out of Chicago, great guitar player, Tony Vogel. Hey, kids. Hey, Tony. Thanks for joining me. A uh, little oh, background God. on Tony. Uh, actually, uh, there's a lot because Tony and I are just going to like talk and and talk music and life and philosophies of music and but uh uh tony and i met on uh the beautiful world of the interwebs and the connected musically and uh tony's an extremely accomplished guitar player a very uh talented songwriter and uh like myself has been doing a lot of tribute shows and you're currently the guitar player or the Angus Young, I would should say in the uh, Rolling Thunder band, which is an ACDC tribute band out of, I'm going to say the Chicago area, but you're, you're, you're uh, west of Chicago, right? Yeah. We're about three hours, three hours west. It don't matter. Yeah. It's, it's, all, it's <laughs> Midwest. No one cares. <laughs> So, uh, Tony, you know, one of the things that I, I've, I've always, you know, because we spent so much time, yeah. you know, talk, talking on the phone, sure. we're drinking buddies over, I don't know how many miles across we are, but we we're, we do a lot of uh, night talks and drinking. So um, how did you, uh, what brought you to the guitar? When did you start playing? Um, well, there was always, uh, my dad played piano and there was always some sort of, he also played um baritone ukulele and so around uh nine or ten uh he tuned it to just the standard uh, first four strings of the guitar mm -hmm. and you know i played the open chords until it drove him crazy right yeah yeah that's what my yeah, my that's what one of the beautiful instruments my dad left me was a baritone ukulele which is tuned right. you know it's interesting isn't that interesting if you think about a baritone ukulele all a guitar is is an extended range ukulele right because if you have a ukulele like, yeah. if you were to play a ukulele on the guitar all you have to do is capo the fifth fret and play the you know mm -hmm. the d g b and e string right mm -hmm. so you know with the advent of like seven string guitars eight string guitars nine and ten string guitars right the ukulele is just an extended range i mean the guitar is well, a, a extended range the soprano, ukulele. And the soprano is tuned completely different well, it is right. You know that. Now other but, uh, people do. Yeah, but the, the remember uh, what, what it is. Yeah, but if you capo the fifth fret of the guitar, right, right, uh -huh. or are we talking at tenor at this point? If you capo the fifth fret of the guitar, your open strings are now G, C, E, and A. Right. Which is yeah. the ukulele. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. So that's what I found fascinating when I was started teaching a lot uh, of ukulele students, and, mm -hmm. and I hadn't, I had never played the ukulele. Right. And then I started to like look at the tuning, going, "Wait a minute, this is it's just the fifth fret uh, of the guitar." And then I kind of went backwards in my head, and I said, "Oh, the guitar is an extended range ukulele." There you go. You know. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense now. I get it. Yeah. I get it. So, see, we're I, only. I probably would have got it faster if I was on my sixth beer, but well, it's, that's the, cool. it's the morning. Cheers. No, it's the morning in Chicago. God knows what time it is here. Uh, it's still I'm on the East Coast. It isn't noon yet. So. Oh, I'm in trouble. All right. <laughs> so um, that that kind of brings me around to like, you know, we talk about ukulele and how you started. Right. Um, what what were the influences? What drove oh. you to the guitar? Um, well, I, uh, older brothers, you know, um, and we had Beatles and Rolling Stones and sitting around the house. And what was the pivotal I, moment, though? Like, what was, can you go, can you think back to that moment where you heard something, whether oh. it was from a record where you were like, that's it? Um, boy, there was probably so many little pieces of that. And, well, you know, started ukulele 10 didn't develop into the guitar until maybe you know uh maybe 12 and then i had my first six string and so i was still just being me and just playing around with chords so i would probably have to say that it was actually still it was listening to you know george harrison 
I was just, you know, a beetle fanatic. Okay. Until I started getting a lot, a lot of technique, which was kind of weird because it was like um, from 12 to 13, hit one of those, you know, woo, big old climbs. And it was like, um, oh, yeah, um, it was, you know, uh, oh, I know, I remember. Gosh, I'm rambling. It was Kansas. No way. They were done. Yeah. That was the turn? Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> see, but you see, that's what's fascinating to me is, you know, uh, well, any musician uh, is that for me, there was that there was a uh, two incidences that happened in um, it was within a one week period. And it wasn't Kansas, though, that did later play into it. But that's really cool. That's such a great what a great track. I mean, that's ridiculously yeah, good song. Mm -hmm. So but I can see that I can imagine like, you know, you right. saying that I can imagine you hearing that vocal intro mm -hmm. and then that guitar riff comes in, you know, um, my story was uh, my my sister's friend had given her the Destroyer album by Kiss. I was nine, right? And the album had already been out because I went back and thought about the the timeline. I was like, yeah, that album had to have been out for like, at least a year. Mm -hmm. And my sister had no love for the band. She was like, these guys are just clowns. Look at them. Right. But I'm right. I'm nine years old and I'm looking at this album cover going these guys are gods and i had no idea what was on the vinyl i had no idea I, yeah. I, so um i stole the record from her <laughs> and uh when i heard the opening riff to uh, detroit rock city mm -hmm. which of course me being an idiot at uh nine years old i go i, I take the you know i'm so fascinated with this it's like 5 a.m uh -huh. i put the record on and i my fisher praise record player <laughs> Yes, kids, Fisher Price record players were a thing. And what I would do, so I put it on, and it's a soundtrack. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the beginning of Detroit Rock City. And I'm like, oh, this is like a story record. <laughs> oh, it's a story. Right. And then the riff comes in. I wake the whole house up because I'm not, I'm too stupid to know that sound travels. So okay. I, I, you know, I'm, right. you know, anyway. Um, and I've just, I had no idea how to like, you know, I wasn't putting anything together. Like, oh, that's a guitar. That's this, that's that. Mm -hmm. I was just like the sound. Then later that week, my sister's got her friends over. This is the seventies. She's mm -hmm. got her friends over or hanging out there partying. And I walk into the party. Of course, she's, you know, my older sister. So she's making fun of me and going, what are you doing here? You're bothering us. And I see the cover of news of the world by queen. Uh huh. And that had just come out. And I remember looking at this record going, what is that? And she goes, oh, do you want to listen to that? She puts it on and it's, of course, We Will Rock You. Hadn't even heard on the radio yet. Right. The guitar comes in. This is what changed my life right here when I heard this. So I say to my sister, I said, what was that? What is that sound? And she goes, it's a guitar, you idiot. And I'm like, I want to make that sound. And she goes, well, then get a guitar and get out of my room. And that was it. That was the beginning. Really? You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once I heard Brian May's guitar sound, that became uh -huh. like, oh, that's guitar. That's what a guitar sounds right. like. Right. You know. So that those were my pivotal moments as a mm -hmm. guitar player. Well, then, of course, um, let's see, by the time I was in uh, high school and uh, in jazz band, your ears developing and, um, you know, your your jazz instructor is saying, well, that guitar player isn't even playing in time. So then um, since I had, um, you know, I grew up in a neighborhood where there was always advanced guitar, guitar guys, you know, right. and, like that's how we grew up in the 70s and 80s. There was like it was a social thing, you know, and yeah. there was like, um, so anyway, so, um, I'm, I was asking, uh, one of the guys that are more advanced than me and said, what, what's he talking about? And so the guy, <laughs> the guy gives me a Dixie Dregs album, oh. Night of the Living Dregs, right? Yeah. Night of the Living Dregs. And it, yeah. And it was just like, oh, I have a lot of work to do wow. <laughs> forever, <laughs> you know, after hearing Steve Morrison was just like, ah. So you were exposed to these 
Yeah, so you were exposed to these heavy players yeah, early Al, on. You know, Al Demiola and, uh, you know, Jeff Beck, um, you know, guitar wonders. I mean, guys that are just, you know, they're not your standard rock and roll player. You know, they're very, very proficient in the mechanics of their instruments, plus they can express themselves, which is always, you know, which is always the end of the game is trying to figure out how can I use what I got to express myself, but still be able to communicate to somebody that might not really care that it took forever to get some good technique under my belt. You know what I mean? Right, right. When do you let it go when you don't? But anyway, yeah. So the same thing is like, that was the second one. And then, uh, or, you know, th that group of guys. And then, um, then there was, the, you know, the hair bands and the Van Halen's and all that type of, you know, and it was just, you know, I, I just got a mesh of everything. Plus the teacher that I, um, that I grew up uh, taking lessons from in the neighborhood was hugely, um, country, um, Chet Atkins type picking. So yeah. I, you know, got a lot of different types of styles that not necessarily I've ever I completely weaved into the sound that I want to make. Cause we never know what that is until it, you start banging on the guitar, the guitar and something comes out. Well, that, I think that, you know, the generation that we came from, and this isn't, you know, a statement like one generation is better than the other. No, no, not I just at think all. it's just, it's it's just, just a, a, it was just different for us, which was, mm -hmm. there was so much. Uh, okay. This is funny because we were getting so much input, but it wasn't input. It was input that we started to follow. In other words, like something would happen you know with you with the dixie dregs me with the right. queen records right. we found something like oh and then we we chased that ghost we went down that mm -hmm. path we kept chasing like what else can i find you know mm -hmm. if i was at the mall it was like where was i going to be i was going to be at the record store right so i went back i was like okay well what oh look at this queen two ah. you know oh, oh there's you know i'm nine i'm like oh right. they have more than one <laughs> <laughs> you know and then i got like sheer heart attack and uh you know yeah. all that stuff but like you said with the right. dregs you know mm -hmm. you start going you start researching the stuff mm -hmm. and we just started to collect you know these these worlds of mm -hmm. guitar players and you know we you know we became guitar centric which is kind of what i find interesting to talk about is were you always a guitar centric person i didn't come that way at first i became very guitar centric i came from like i just wanted to be in a rock band i wasn't even thinking of being like a, a crazy lead player or a shredder at that time you know i um my technique developed a lot later than the rest of the guys and so you know i just you know, i played what i could play yeah, but were you was it were you driven to play because it was like I want to be in a band, I want to be with a, a group of people that were connected, or mm -hmm. were you thinking I'm playing for the sole purpose of just exploration, like oh this is just something to do? I just um, a little bit of both. It was like you know, but mostly it was. Um, this is what I can do and I do it fairly well. So I'm going to try to do it the best that I can. And it's right. like, it's the same thing I strive every time I pick up my guitar and, you know, really do some heavy practicing and scalar work. And, but I became right. I became that more eccentric type of, you know, listening and playing guitar. And so, you know, growing up in high school, it was like, I was not listening to popular music at all. Right. Right. No, it was just like, you know, I don't know why you guys think that band's good because I've already figured out, you know, I've been taught that this is what are truly technical technician guitarists, if that's the right phrasing, can do. And then I'm listening to that and it's like, okay. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like that was my decision. I wanted to go down the fusion world and just, you know, really understand how to play guitar is not so much just like a rock or folk instrument because a lot of people st still consider the guitar a folk instrument you know which always blows my mind 
you sounded like you, you sounded like you were a good student. I was a shitty guitar no, student. No, no, no. I, I was, was horrible. Not, I was not a good student at all. Yeah, but what you just said to me though that I find interesting is that obviously with your your instructor or who you were mm -hmm. studying from, right? They were presenting you with this you know the fusion thing some of the jazz stuff that permeated with you because you're hearing maybe the pop stuff of the day when you were in high school right um i i drove my teacher at that time up the wall because, because I, I because i could play right. but i had no like he would sit there and he would turn me on to this stuff and i and i and i loved it but right. i was coming in with ingbe records going i want to learn an ingbe solo and he's like this is crap <laughs> i will not teach you this stuff we're learning a west montgomery solo which oh. in hindsight i'm like uh, yeah that you know I right. bet he was absolutely he was absolutely right in teaching me a west montgomery solo sure. but i found it fascinating that he had drawn the line he's like no we're not doing that it's not going to happen so you know the anyway mm -hmm. thing i had to figure out on my own right but it sounds to me that you had a rapport with your early teachers. Like, how? what was your rapport like? Well, um, well, her name was Arlene Bolas, and she was basically like everybody's second mom. Okay. So uh, when you came in and you didn't practice, and she didn't fuck around, she just said, dude, I can tell. Well, she didn't use the word dude. She'd say, Tony, you didn't practice, did you? And I said, nope. And she said, okay. Well, I'm going to go up and fix dinner. You can sit down here and practice. Because you know what? You wasted my time. And I wish I was that strong of a... You know, but did she at least give you dinner? What? Did she no, give you no, dinner? No, she wasn't making me dinner. She was making dinner for the family. She just said, basically, fuck off. <laughs> You're wasting my time. And, you know, somebody... You know, and that's when you learn. It's like, oh, I'm I, have, making... I, have, I have a responsibility also right. yeah. to She's up there have ownership mistakes. of this instrument and... You know, not is this isn't babysitting. This is like if you want to play guitar, you know, you can't that's come actually, in. That's you, a great you, story. Can't, you can't come in. You can't come into rehearsal and not know the song. Right. You know what no, I mean? It's the same thing. Right. And so that was a lesson that she was a teaching. But I, you know, I was, you know, 13, still stupid as fuck. Right. But I think it's fascinating though because it's, it's great because that's a killer story. You know, she's like, ah, you didn't practice. I'm going to go up and make some steaks and potatoes and you, you work on your C scales. <laughs> what I remember, here's one on that subject. Right. Uh, so I was studying and it's interesting. I, my, my first guitar teacher was Nancy Vogel, phenomenal player, great class mm -hmm. rock player. Mm -hmm. So she comes to me one day and she goes, you're going to learn to sight read. I'm like, really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. She, so she decides that the way to teach me to sight read is to notate really? now you know, I, I, you know I, it was clear as a young kid i was into zeppelin as well i was into my sister's record collection and she had it all right. so she starts to notate this right and as she's notating it on on the paper, she's yeah. checking her work, right? So it's uh -huh. like the camera is not really picking this up, but she's playing, writing, and all I do for twenty minutes is watch her left hand. I just, you know, because mm -hmm. another thing, kids, there were no cell phones then to be distracted by. <laughs> I have the young people off camera here, just. Anyway, the point being is, so she writes all of this out, uh -huh. and I just watch her left hand the whole time. Right. So I go home, and I had it. I actually had this on eight track. Mm, so I sat with you. my guitar every day, yeah. and just it took me time, some time to get the right hand thing going. Right. But I just kept playing it. Never opened my book. Never opened it. <laughs> So the next week I go back, she and she's not messing around. She's uh -huh. like, here we go. She opens the book. She goes, play it. So I start to play it. And I'm killing it. Yeah. But again, I'm an idiot. So I'm staring at the top of the page pretending to it's read it. Right. But she's 
she sees that I'm already at this point. Mm-hmm. And I'm still looking at the top of the page. <laughs> I shit you not, Tony. Right. The music stand went flying across the room. Oh, oh my gosh. She stands up and she unleashes on me the nine levels of hell. She's like, you're just a lazy, don't do your, you know, I'm bleeping myself out, even though I don't really need to, but she's right. like, lazy, get out, just get out, you're done, <laughs> kicks me out. Oh, I yeah, I have the similar story of uh, the sight reading thing, and uh, okay, just a little bit of background, I have dyslexia, so it's really difficult to, re- it, for one thing, it's just hard to sight read music on guitar anyway, because there's so many different places you can play the same thing. Right. But I just see things backwards and, you know, that's just, you know, and I see things upside down. So I'm sitting there and uh, Arlene's, uh, we're, I don't know, maybe we're on book number three of Mel Bay because that's what we did. Um, plus, you know, other other exercise that she wrote out by hand. Beautiful manuscript writer. Just, you know, she was an artist, too. But anyway, so I'm sitting there and uh, she notices that I am not looking at the, the sheet of music whatsoever. Right. And that I'm just a fraction of a second behind her playing. So all I'm doing is mirroring what she's doing. Right. I just, because I can't, I can sight read to a degree, but you know, that's, you know, after a little bit, it's not, it's too much. I can't, my brain just can't fucking process it. Yeah. But you were, but that you're shadowing her. So your ear was in pretty decent shape. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And I something that I, as a teacher today, uh, I encourage that among my students. So, you know, like it, you right. know, develop the ear as well. I mean, yeah, sight, all that stuff's important. I know it was, right. it was the basis of teaching then, back mm-hmm. in, um, back, back then. Right. Uh, it was like the basis of teaching, and the books. Now, you know, whatever it was, Mel Bay or whatever it was. I go, oh, here's the book. You know, you're gonna, we're gonna work out of the book. I don't do that as a teacher. Do you work out of books? It depends on the student. If uh, if I see that they have no discipline whatsoever, then I give them homework. Well, we I think we all give them homework, but what do you mean like in terms of discipline? Um, some, if you just don't, if you don't really, really want to play guitar, you know, right. that's not, it's what you're, you know, because we both did. And it's like, I yeah. love the guitar. Don't know why. I want to be good at it. There's a lot of st- students that don't know that they want to be good at it yet. And so sometimes it just has to be a structured book. Because that's the only way they can see success. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Because I think, uh, I don't know if you ever do this, but, you know, when I was at uh, GIT, we kept a log. You know, all right, this uh, uh, Monday through Tuesday, I'm working on the G major scale, um, all seven positions. Um, this is the tempo that I can play it at. This is how long I practiced it. And so now you have a you have some history of where you were from and who you are now. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't do I, it now. No, I know. <laughs> that in, in learning stage and just it's just another way of right. creating discipline within yourself, being mindful of what's going on on the guitar. And then, you know, it's just like everything else. Once you know, you get it, you kind of throw it away. You know what I mean? Right. And I, and I want to, I do want to talk about after a while. I do want to talk about your GIT stuff. Yeah, no, that's a good point. But yeah, I, I used to keep a log um, of what I was doing at a particular time technically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, whether it was, you know, mm-hmm. major scales, modes, you know, right. arpeggio sequences, whatever, yeah. and I would keep a log. Matter of fact, it's interesting. I actually uncovered my entire library, uh, recently that I had kept because I had kept all of this stuff documented. Uh, it's 522 pages. Uh, that includes not only what I had written out or transcribed or wow. worked on, but just the, as you said, a log of like, oh, this is what I did this many times. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Obviously, I was definitely in need of help. Um, <laughs> but there is definitely something to be said for that because uh-huh. I remember uh, 
that's another thing that you know talking about you know technical guitar players sean petrucci used to do that he used to have a checklist of what he was going to do mm. on a particular day so he knew now it's interesting when you say time you know you're like uh, i you know the idea of like oh i'm going to play i'm going to practice 30 minutes 40 minutes 50 right. minutes i when it came to technique i didn't do that mm. it, to me it was repetition the same way back in the day when i actually used to go to a gym right it would be oh i'm going to do this 16 reps so i would do a scale 16 reps oh okay next i, I exercise you know it was and it was purely for technical purposes it wasn't and okay. then after those reps then i would just play the guitar and not pr that's not practicing to me playing the guitar and practicing are two different things i would right. just play the guitar it's just mm -hmm. you know i'm just expressing how i'm feeling right now right uh is that an well, approach you probably, that well you probably learned how to practice smartly or smart all right and practicing smart smartly. is I like smartly <laughs> i'm a smartly ass um if you are not aware enough that you are making a mistake and you keep practicing that same mistake over and then you go to your more advanced teacher and, and they say well what did you do all week um why why are you asking i practice the, the heck out of these scales and it's like well you're having a problem with your transition from the the g to the b string when you have to move positions they're like oh i didn't notice so you know it's all about practicing smart and you probably did that it's like I can't play this yet at this tempo. So don't go back a couple of clicks on the metronome. So you're, you're not practicing a, a mistake. So you probably figured out early on how to get technique quicker than a lot of other people did because they just were not self aware that they were not playing it correctly. Well, that see, that's a very interesting thing when you say self aware, because I think that's really the key right to, to be self-aware of what it, the end game is like what is it that i'm trying to do right. you know like you know so yeah and and maybe with some student you know certain students if you can't hear it right. i guess that's where i'm coming to like you have to hear it first mm -hmm. you know go, oh oh that's what that is you know what right. i mean mm -hmm. and you know you and i grew up through a time where there was like these guitar players coming at you Right. And I mean, that's true today. I'm not separating that because, you know, with YouTube, I'm seeing some of these young players. Oh, I and I just, I'm on the floor chattering in fear. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> there, there was so, they, they, you know, they've created this whole other thing, which is great. I love that. I love they're building mm -hmm. on that kind of thing. Um, but you could, there's also something else I hear. I, I can tell they're hearing it. You know, they're hearing this stuff. It's like, oh, wow. You know, you hear something new. Right. You know, maybe the first time we heard Eddie Van Halen. Right. We're like, what is that? Right. What is that? Well, that's you know, we, it, 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 no, but l let me just put this point out there. It's because at that moment in time, when you heard something new and you, all right, so there's a difference between listening and hearing. Hearing is actually the cognitive process that happens from, no, it's the other way of hearing. Listening is actually the cognitive of hearing, right? So hearing is the mechanical part. Right. And then the, the, the intellectual part is the listening. Right. And some people don't ever listen. Yeah, um, yeah I'm just, you know, you know, no, it's like, it's true. Okay, well, you're not listening, you're hearing, but you're not <clears throat> listening, which means they have not figured out what they're hearing yet. Right, right, right. And, and I think, like you said before, if you can't hear it, you can't play. Or if you, so, should we change that around? If you like, yeah, if you can't hear it in your head, then you can, probably aren't going to be able to play it. Okay, so I okay, so that's Step the bridge. Big, so yeah. hearing it is one thing, the cognitive of listening, right. and then internalizing. There's the, yeah, there's our third little chunk of the puzzle. right. So once you right. internalize that idea, then it's like, oh, okay, I right. see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Or at least I can hear it so that I know that what I'm playing right. is not what I'm hearing. And I see a lot of young students that are so in tune with that now. You know, they'll sit there and they'll say, they're working on the part and they're like, I don't know. It doesn't sound right yet. And I always applaud that. I'm like, mm -hmm. not only are you correct that it does, <laughs> because it's not right, but the first step on getting it right is the fact that you're hearing that it's not right. 
Right. You know, it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. So I did, I did one of those lessons with two of my students last week where I just took like, uh, what did I play? Uh, the, uh, basically the Layla, um, type of idea. All right. All right. So then I said, yeah. um, um, oops, I fucked that one up. All right. All right. Well, right. See that. So anyway, basically, you know, I played it in three different octaves. So I said, well, listen to this one. Right. It's not really like, but you know what I'm talking about. Which one sounds, which one it's all the same leg until you can hear at least the first one. You're not going to understand what this one means. Right. Okay. So yeah, you're coming at it from like a positional standpoint of if you can't hear. The interesting thing about that leg. Or a two string lick. Pretty simple. How many notes there? Oh, sorry, sorry. That's not right. See? <laughs> See, and that's a great, that's a great lick because it's a phrasy lick. Right. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, but if you can't, you know, you got to be yeah. able to hear something simple. Yeah. And then, you know, I can't get any more simpler than that. Once you're like, you know, if you've been with me for three months, you, you're not listening yet. Well, I think that comes down to the other question is. And I'm not, dis I'm not dissing any of my students. It's just the truth. You just, you know, because it's obvious. Uh, the other question is, is. From our standpoint, from our point of view of how point of view in doing the guitar and teaching you know what i mean right we know right if you can't play c chord yet you just don't want to play well right i mean there's that you know and it, it's and also I think, we, uh, I, I think we went down the wrong rabbit hole no there's no such thing as a wrong rabbit hole <laughs> no i mean that's the whole thing the whole point is like if um I think the ultimate job of a of a teacher is to inspire. Right. You know what I mean? Because obviously the students putting the work in, you know, they're right. they're pushing that envelope. They're going down that road. Mm -hmm. uh, but we as teachers show doorways. And I had I used to I still do is with a lot of students, I, I give them listening homework. Mm. And sometimes I'll, I'll pull stuff out, like I'll pull some classic rock stuff out. And what I encourage them to do is come back the next week and tell me what, not only what they liked about it, but what they didn't like about it. Oh, okay. Because I find what students music, dislike about something is equally as important as to what they might like about it. Uh -huh. And it also gives me insight to them into right. what drives them musically. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I found that very fascinating. A lot of my students i learned that they were reacting to a song sonically in other words they didn't have a problem with the song they had the problem with the way it was recorded oh wow and that was fascinating to me because i'm like wow this this kid's reacting to sonics huh. which is exactly what i did when i was younger when one of my teachers were turning me onto these jazz records uh-huh the fidelity and wasn't there the fidelity was bothering me right and I, you know, now I, you know, I look back and I'm like, you know, kick myself in the face. Like, man, I <laughs> wish I had material there. Time. Yeah. But uh, I remember that. I remember uh, uh, Arlene would, uh, that was my uh, teacher when I was growing up. Um, and she put on this, this, you know, some Chet Atkins and the album's all scratchy and like, I can barely, you know. But she grew up with it, so she knows exactly what she's yeah. listening to. And all I'm hearing is the scratching and the popping. The scratching and the popping, like, yeah. I remember just hearing those jazz records with that, like, high. Right. 
And I'm like, it sounds like it's raining. <laughs> Why do all these jazz records sound like it's raining? Like, I mean, I reacted that way. I was like, you know, I was like, right. just put on a Queen record. I just want to hear that backbeat. You know, it was, you know. Mm -hmm. So, right. GIT, you go yeah. to GIT. Right. What was it like? I wanted to go so bad. Um, there was a lot of learning just by osmosis. Right. I can, you know, yeah, I can see that. Um, man, I, like once again, like when I was growing up in, you know, in high school, there was always guys that were more advanced than me. And when I moved into the apartment complex, the guys uh, that I first met were uh, the, the, the tail end of the year. All right. Cause it's a vocational school. It's one year. I mean, it's changed now, but at the time it was just basically vocational one year long. Get out. Right. Right. They'd already, I mean, they'd already discovered chops. I mean, they, I mean, they could do, you know, at all the scales, all right. the edges, at, you know, you know, at 200 and I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 19. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, and in Hollywood, I'm still have no clue. I barely have a clue now, but back then I had even less. So, you know, just going and listening to them, watching their right and left hands and looking at me, it's like, okay, well, I, I basically I'm doing the same thing. So, you know, he was like, I said, so what are you doing there? Because, you know, I could go to class and, you know, they can throw up all the, the charts they want and I'm not going to get anything out of it. It's just the way my brain works. More of a kinetic learner, you know what I mean? Hands okay. on, um, maybe a little bit on a piece of paper and then somebody demonstrating it. Because what I found out when I was growing up is that if you haven't seen somebody physically do something, astounding on the guitar if you've only heard it mm -hmm. right it's got very difficult to really understand how the mechanics work but that's just me speaking now that so i'm going to go back to the youtube kids that you're talking about there is so much visual that you can see people's hands doing things mm -hmm. those complicated things that we just thought was incredible magic as we were growing up it's like how in the heck does anybody play like that? Right. Well, they have all that opportunity right now. So when we do see those prodigy 10, 12 year olds, it's because they've probably been looking at the stuff since they were six years old. Well, <clears throat> you know, it's an interesting concept. Uh, yeah. And you're right. You know, because you have the visual, I mean, I was a visual learner too. Like if I saw somebody do something on the guitar, mm -hmm. I could, I could yeah. do it. Right. I had the physicality to basically just mime what they were doing, mm -hmm. but I was driven by why they were doing it. I wanted to know why they did that because I wanted to bring it into a formula that I could then apply to everything else. Right. But to your point on seeing things, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. And I'll never take anything away from that. But at the yeah. same time, I'm going to play devil's advocate and say oh, that right. stylistically, historically players have developed iconic styles based on what they heard and, a, and an example and this is kind of or what they thought they heard well what they thought they heard right right well no that's me well no that's a lot of people for instance right. when when greg howe first heard uh, eruption he heard it he had no idea that it was happening he thought he was just doing that with one hand. Oh, they don't. Yeah. Right. Right. Same leg. Right. But what he ended up developing was that technique that he's known for, which is that. <laughs> that never would have existed had yeah. he not heard something that he thought was that had no basis in what because he couldn't see it it was right. all ears so uh -huh. he had to recreate it right he had to recreate that sound mm -hmm. just like if you were okay you you know uh, you play an sg right. and say you never heard a dive bomb before in your life <laughs> right the first one I you start to you're like oh i have to make that i have to make that sound 
because I don't, you know, I don't use whammy bars. Right. So, you know what I mean? So there's a magic to not seeing what you're no. hearing right. and letting that that happen. And you start to create this, your own way right. of playing something that is super cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know? I don't know yeah, if that so makes I sense. Had something like, so I had something like this, Chris. Um, when I was at school, I was just, you know, I, you know, I don't have the best right hand in the world. We've talked about this many times. Well, anyway, can you see my guitar neck? All right, so um, let's I'm not warm down. One of those types of licks, and I said, God, that's just, I don't have the picking. So I decided, it's like, well, because it already been going. That stuff. Gosh, I hate this tone. Uh, so I said, okay, then. So, you know, you see, but that's the beautiful thing about what you just did there is that you still made the, the, the musical point. Right. And that's the great thing about the guitar is like <laughs> play one idea multiple ways. Exactly. So uh, that's an interesting thing. Like, where do you get, to, you know, how do you, you know, you, you create your, your approach. That's yours. That's, that's your thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, be, mm -hmm. be proud of it and, and, you know, back it up. Um, right. Now, as a teacher, how do you bridge that gap where you're like, okay, like, you know, like, so you were saying like the, that kind of right. thing. Or, I can do now, but I couldn't then. Right. But you found a way to do it. Out of necessity. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what creates, you know, that's if what you don't feel you. like you have necessity, you know, yeah. you, then I don't, I don't know how to inspire anybody. You know, it's just like anything else. You, you gotta want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's like everything I, you gotta want to work out. I don't want to work out. I don't care. You know right. I mean? Right. Gotcha. So, uh, <laughs> You leave GIT, what got you into the tribute thing? Um, well, you know how, how hard it is to get a good gig. Um, that pays. Um, <laughs> pays the bills. Or, or, or pays for the whiskey, well, whichever one comes first. It leads to more than break even coming home, right? You, know, you actually oh, yeah. get some money, right? Yeah. Um, I was playing in a band that was going nowhere and you know, I, I still kind of, I'm not boasting, but I still kind of have a little bit of a name around the quad cities and that's where basically I'm from. Um, I won a couple of guitar contests and you know, one of those types of things. So I had a name, but I basically retired. You know what I mean? I've retired. All I was doing is sitting in the studio recording. And then I got into a 60s, 70s band that wasn't going anywhere. And um, one of the, you know, uh, my friends, uh, Mark DeKal, uh, Facebooked me one day and said, what are you doing? And I basically said, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm bored. I need to do something. He said, well, right. we're reforming an ACDC tribute band. Uh, I got a show that's coming up with uh, our the original core band. I want you to come and watch the show and see if you want to do anything like this. Mm -hmm. So I just went from there. And okay. I watched it. I watched it, and it's like, oh, you know, it's, yeah, okay, costume. Mm. The hardest part is doing the acting, all right. And then the second part was not playing like me all the time. Yeah. Sometimes every, That's you know, tough. Some, sometimes solos just, you know, or sometimes I love Angus, but sometimes his solos just like a space in the song so it can come back to the chorus. Right. Course, of course. Um, so that's, you know, when I kind of go, okay, I still have to uh, play stylistically uh, like him. And it's like, okay, you are not playing a major scale. You're not playing any of the modes of the major scales over, you know, not doing Dorian because he doesn't play Dorian. He's playing either major pentatonic or minor pentatonic. So, okay. So that's an interesting point is that are you separating, in other words, 
when you talk about you know like he's not playing dorian he's not playing that right is that something that you would have done if the, if you were the original guy on that track and i that question is based That's on the fact tough to say man because i would never eh, well now i write you know riffs like that a little bit more on the, the rock and roll side and right you know not so um I, you know i put a lot of nines in everything because i'm an idiot um in my chords um but i don't know because i okay so let's look at it this way i went to git so i didn't have to play chuck berry licks anymore <laughs> all right so let's think about this let's think about how this so i didn't how, have to play chuck berry licks because that's basically you know there's a lot of guitar van halen's still kind of basically a chuck berry pentatonic type of dude he just oh, yeah, wrote yeah. it differently angus has definitely he's told it angus right. has told it right off the bat i stole pretty much everything from chuck berry i just play it a little bit different right right okay so, so that's the funny thing is that I went to school and I practiced so I didn't have to play, you know, boring pentatonics. And I'm sorry, not pentatonics aren't boring, but you know, once your ear gets developed and you hear other sounds, you want to emulate those sounds, emulate those sounds. So anyway, it's just funny that the world turns its cycle around and now I'm playing Chuck Berry licks again. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I, and I, you're not. The hard part is acting. The hard part about the whole show is trying to, to do his moves. Yeah, I guess you have to. And look like too. him as much as you, you can. Because we that. know we're not ACDC. Do the spinning on the floor thing? No, I'm too old for that. But you still have to act like it. You see. I mean, I can get to my knees. I can do the classic drop to your knees wow. type of stuff like that. As long as there's not a nail sticking out of the stage. I couldn't do that, man. Did I got to tell you. I've done I've done the Queen tributes. Mm -hmm. I did a, a Van Halen tribute. I did right. an Ingve tribute, and my current thing, which is a UFO tribute. Right. And with the Ingve thing and the UFO thing, there's no acting. No. Just go out there and just play the way I normally would. Right. And I, have, I just have a good time. I, I don't know, dude. I, I I couldn't do what you did. Um, what you do. Like, I understand what you're saying. Like, yeah, because that's what the audience wants. You, you, they want Angus Young. Right. You have to be that. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's tough. So, you know, the first six months were horrible when we were gigging. I still couldn't see it. My drummer, Mark, did because he is a true ACDC. He's more than a fan. He just loves ACDC. Okay. And so after, so we were, you know, it was before we were out traveling and going to Sturgis and stuff like that. Yeah, you guys were Minneapolis doing Minneapolis. Still you know, are? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so when we were playing locally and Mark goes, okay, uh, you're coming over. We're having some beers and we're going to talk about the show. I said, well, why? I said, because you suck at being Angus wow. right now. No, I'm a great guitar player, but I was not the character yet. And that's well, that was, yeah. you know, I yeah. don't have acting lessons. I don't know that I'm not seeing these things right. So it took about a good six to eight months for me to actually start being able to, you know, continuously move on stage and still be able to play rhythm. And but I tell you what, I get stuck when a solo comes. I got, I got to tell myself, you got to keep your feet moving. You got to, you got to keep doing the two step, even though, you know, cause it's a guitar solo. I need to concentrate or at least think I'm concentrating on it. You know what I mean? Cause now, now the technique has changed from playing just chunky rhythm stuff to like, you know, all right, am I going to pick this tonight? Am I going to, is it going to be legato? He picks, you know, he's had some legato, but you know, he's mostly in a, up, you know, wow yeah. so you're st like you're thinking of it analytically and not viscerally i don't know how to do that <laughs> i've lived way too far in the intellectual of it you know what i mean wow so this is this is good for me because even when i write now i am not going i am not going for 30 second notes you know what i mean Oh yeah, I have no fucks to give about. You know, I, I've no got. I, I write. I, I, I write this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but the thing is that you know, you and I can do that. Like, I could, I could pick up a guitar and say, <laughs> "Oh, I'm going to put like an arpeggio sequence over here," simply because oh. I can. Right. But it it doesn't. But then you have to sit back on this get director of a movie right. and say, "Does it serve the piece?" 
mm -hmm. or doesn't it? Right. And if it does, that's fantastic. Right. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. then it's not, it's not purposeful. It doesn't right. resonate. I remember and I was, it, that's a good thing to say because um, I remember I was in an original band um, and we were roots rock and roll type of a sound. And uh, um, the guy that did most of the writing said, Tony, you got to play a solo that, you know, serves the song. I was like, didn't I? And he said, nope. Wow. It's too complicated. We're not playing complicated music. You are playing, you know, your virtuoso shit over the top of, you know, yeah. banging out C, G, and D. I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about, like coming full circle, like, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was even then, and I still didn't understand it. Right. That was quite quiet. That was probably about 10 years ago. Wow. Like I said it's kind of stupid, you know. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't, I, you know. I don't I, know if it's stupid. It's just that I'm learned. I'm learned. <laughs> right. But in this schooling of guitar. <clears throat> and so that's who I don't, you know, that's what I'm always looking for. But that's not what, it's not that it doesn't pay the money, but gigs like that don't pay the money. Us being, you know what I mean? We can. If I did a jazz fusion band, I'm not going to make any money. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, you know, <clears throat> and I do enjoy playing the ACDC project, you know, Rolling yeah. Thunder. It's freaking awesome. Uh, well, hey, look, there's nothing wrong with it. Look, I every tribute band I've ever done, I've enjoyed every show. Mm -hmm. It's because it's, it's especially the Queen tribute band. You know, we were playing well, yeah. massive rooms and. Man, mm -hmm. just that music. I mean, I was like my childhood fantasy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't dress up like Brian May. I didn't. I didn't do any of that. I just, right. you know, matter of fact, mm -hmm. I was still playing my Stratocasters at the time before I moved to my V's. So I wasn't even playing the Brian May guitar. But my point being is that, <clears throat> you know, you're talking about this, uh, you know, you know, bringing all this together like full circle and kind mm -hmm. of getting back to like the early. You know the early days and stuff like that now there's a little interesting footnote to this is a really close friend of mine uh joe massimiano who's a phenomenal musician he's he was doing uh, a neil young tribute show the broken arrow mm -hmm. massive successful act touring the country mm -hmm. and he calls me one day he's like chris i got the gig with broken arrow i'm singing neil young okay but i'm not doing neil young solos <laughs> Joe Mass is a monster player. I mean, I was, right. he was a, mm -hmm. he's still a mentor to me. Like I'm a, an yeah. eternal student of Joe Mass. And he's like, uh -huh. I'm shredding these solos. <laughs> and that's what he does. He presents this show, but it's a Neil Young song. And then he just unleashes the fury years, just like, mm -hmm. wow. And you know what? The audience completely digs it. They're completely mm -hmm. into it, you know? Right. It's so, you know what? The next, you have a show tonight, right? You guys have a show tonight. Where are you playing? Uh, we're, uh, we're just like 45 minutes uh, out of uh, our area. Um, we're in, uh, Clarence, Iowa, which is one of these weird little satellite bars. Well, it's not a satellite bar. There's satellite little towns around it. Right. And so there's nothing to do because the closest place to go is the quad cities. And that's 45 minutes to an hour away. Right. And so it's this bar in the middle of the country. Nice. And it's huge. It's huge, huge dance floor. Pretty nice size stage. Okay. But people come because there's nothing. Hey, what to do. you're going to do tonight night. is you're going to sweep our pedros over uh, back in black. That's exactly uh, what you're going to do. I did get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get in trouble tonight because I'm firing <laughs> you up right now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and and I better get a report back that that's exactly what you did. No, I can't. I can't. Oh yes, you can. The only time I can is when, um, uh, not to say that we, you know. We, Sometimes I have to do the extended solo where we go out, where I go out in the audience and right. riff at people's faces. Especially my favorite ones are the ones that are on their telephone. And I just stare at the motherfucking face. Oh, yeah. yeah it's like, until they notice that I am right there. All right. Gotcha. But anyway, yeah. that's when I kind of let loose and I'll do some two hand stuff or because I got to fill. I got to fill like, you know, you know, three minutes. It's like, what do you got? That's good. No, you know, and, you know it, I mean? and that's the only time I do that. But like, you know, I think with we with we, what I did was I, 
you know, I like I said, I did the Ingve the Ingve tribute for a while. You know, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, for me, I took it as far as I could could go with it. You know, I was just right. okay. And then when I started doing the UFO Michael Schenker tribute, I found this love for playing again that was connecting that world of, you know, all the stuff I loved, mm-hmm. you know, the, growing up on that stuff, you know, the rock and roll stuff, but being able to incorporate all that other stuff that I had grabbed, like you had said this earlier, and it kind of really, you know, brings the point home, if you will. Right. You learn all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, so, but I think that's, I think that's misinterpreted. Not what you said. I'm saying to the people that hear that, learn everything and then forget it all. Oh. That's an easy thing to misinterpret because what happens is like, you sit there and you learn the scale. But then you're not. That's me forgetting it all but I know where everything is in the scale. I'm just playing what I'm hearing in my head. Right. I'm not doing Not that there's anything wrong with that either, but I would rather go. So the idea there is like going back to what you said is right. you're taking all of the stuff that you took in and right. then you have to put it back out there in you, through your lens. Right. You're editing. You're editing. Right. Which I think well, is personal the editing. Right. Personal editing. Yeah. Tony, I love hanging out with you, man. <laughs> it's always a blast. And thank you yeah. for spending time with me today. No problem. I hope we uh, entertain some people today absolutely and we'll do it again and uh you know what i want to report back of you just completely unleashing tonight at one point just i don't care where it is just randomly unleash the craziest like that tapping like you did earlier oh just do it yeah let's let's hear what tony's gonna do That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Little flight of the bumblebee. Bullshit. Flight of the wounded bumblebee. Flight of the Angus bee. Right. Uh, again, thank you again, Tony. No uh, problem. I always I love hanging out with you, uh, which we do often. Yes, we do. Like I said, you and I could probably be a comedy duo somewhere in, an, in another universe, but uh, <laughs> musically, uh, I'm honored to be your friend. And, Me too. Uh, Same here. Love sharing time with you. So. Uh, All right. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Me and Tony Vogel, guitar player for Rolling Thunder. They're somewhere in this big bar in the Midwest. What is it? What state? Uh, uh, Clarence, Iowa. Clarence, Iowa. Ladies and gentlemen. Big times. He's playing in Clarence, Iowa. Um, And I love the guy to death. So thank you so much. And thanks for tuning in. And uh, stay tuned. There's going to be a... A lot more coming from Unsung Heroes. I am Chris Gordon. I love you all. Take care of yourself. Peace.